Tony Romo wasn't in Madden 2004 as an undrafted rookie, but he was in Madden NFL 2005. I'm going to take over Dallas Cowboys and hand him the starting job and see if I can jumpstart his career two seasons earlier than it really happened. Let's see how it turned out. There are four quarterbacks in the room and he's the worst one. Since I know he's going to be the starter, we can trade off players for some draft capital. I traded away Testaverde to the Colts for Sorgi and a fifth round pick. I also traded away Quincy Carter to the Patriots for a fourth round pick and their running back Kevin Falk. Why? Cause the running backs on the roster aren't fantastic. Though Julius Jones is just a rookie and I want to build as much as I can around Romo, so we can't complain that he doesn't have the weapons to succeed. I mean, look at the receiving room. There's no excuses other than him being bad. Lastly, I noticed that Drew Henson was not happy here. I traded him off to Chicago with a fourth round pick for Krenzel and a third round pick. Here's the new quarterback room. Romo is going to start come season time, but after the preseason, I can't believe a guy named Krenzel outperformed him. Now if you're curious about the scheme, Tuna leans more on the ground game, but not by much. While his defense is super aggressive, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Before we start the year, since everyone got their first pickings on the free agents during the preseason, I'm going to take whatever is left over. We need to solidify the right side of the line, signed an 85 overall Solomon Page for the right tackle position. I also signed aging corner Otis Smith as a one year rental. Screw it! I signed two aging corners to help beef up the position. It was the weakest spot on the defense. Let's begin the year against the Minnesota Vikings with Tony Romo giving Dallas the go ahead score in the fourth quarter to win the game. We're undefeated with Romo as the starter. That didn't last long as we lost seven straight games. Our next win wouldn't be until we face Philadelphia where Romo had his best performance of the season, but that's not saying much. We wouldn't win a single game after that, finishing the year 2-14. and 14. Funny enough, earlier in the year, I had released the player and, well, his agent sent me this. He might have been onto something. Oh, during our second losing streak, we faced off against the Bears where, um, Drew Henson made us pay. This season was rough and Tony Romo was bad. I can't even defend it because the team isn't built with a bunch of 60 overall players. They have an elite defense, a strong offensive line, decent playmakers. Romo is weighing this team down. The running game wasn't fantastic though. The only argument that can be made is that with a good running game, Romo wouldn't have to do so much. I think we know what we're going to do in the offseason, but we're also going to have other holes to fill like at strong safety with the retirement of Woodson as well as the other two corners we signed at the start of the year. Do want to point out that this game has career ending injuries. Also restricted free agency, it's a bit whack. I wanted the strong safety but they wanted a first and third for him. Yeah, no. Now we have 32 million to work with and since we know Romo is going to be here until he retires, I'm maxing out his contract years. Since we don't have to pay crazy money for a quarterback, let's go wild. I re-signed Matt Lair. He's an okay starter, but right now I want only 80 overall or better players, even as depth. Greg Ellis is coming back. That's what we can do when we could pay Romo peanuts. Willie Blade is going to return at defensive tackle, and lastly, Billy Cundiff will be back. The highest rated player who's not coming back is James Stewart. I had signed him during the season because I was getting sick and tired of Kevin Falk fumbling every game. I'm not joking, he started five games and fumbled in four of them. Which means you can probably figure out who I'm drafting in the first round. We had the first overall pick, but they had a running back projected to go third overall. I went to trade down with the Steelers, but I couldn't get anything worth it. Then I decided to throw the house at Jacksonville for Fred Taylor. These draft picks ain't worth nothing. In the end, I drafted the running back. These Madden generated players are terrible. Next video, I need to do NCAA imports. It looks like we'll be doing more trades or free agent signings to build around Romo, and I found the perfect candidate, Jeff 
Saturday. Oh, he wasn't very happy to come here, but happiness can be bought. This offensive line is going to be the strength that carries this team. Season 2 will be underway and Tony Romo once again can't beat out Krenzel. He lost to a guy named Krenzel. A Again, but that doesn't mean I won't force him in again. Now before we start the season, screw the draft, I'm trading all my picks away. I was tired of Kevin Falk after one season and traded him with a second round pick for Charlie Gardner and a fourth. This is an upgrade, but Gardner is old. I also traded away our first round pick for Gary Baxter. Our secondary was weaker coming into the season. This should put us back to being elite. Let's start the season against the Seattle Seahawks and for the second straight year, we're undefeated with Tony Romo as the starter. Well, then we would lose three straight, but we beat the Eagles again for the second straight season. Romo will get the win, but Krenzel had to come in early and drove the team down with a game-tying touchdown in the final minute, then let the field goal drive in overtime. Then they would lose a close one the following week where Romo was injured again, but this time he'll be out for three weeks. With how well Krenzel has been performing, this might be a good thing. It, it wasn't a good thing. Krenzel is just as bad as Romo, got whooped against the Broncos, but somehow managed to squeeze out another overtime win against the Saints, and we're now officially better than last season. Romo was supposed to come back, but he was still out against Washington and New York, Krenzel lost to both of them. He returned for their second meeting against Washington. Romo made it closer, but they still lost. Then the following week against New York, even with a terrible performance, they managed to get their fourth win of the year. That would be their final win of the season, finishing 4-12. Romo is, well, he's getting worse. Missed one third of the season due to an injury, which is interesting since they had one of the least sacked teams in the NFL. The running game is still a problem that needs to be fixed, even with Gardner, they struggled. As you can see, the offense is terrible. The defense is bad against the run. The only way I can think of fixing this is to hire some new coordinators. I fired the offensive coordinator whose strength is the running back. Surprisingly, that was the only ranking that wasn't dead last. I replaced him with Mike Martz who is an offensive guru. I also hired Monte Kiffin on defense. There is no excuses next year. As expected, Gardner retired. We need to fill that hole and things are getting trickier this year with the re-signing period. I was able to re-sign Man Campbell, but Antonio Bryant wanted nothing to do with me, same with Di Napoli. I knew I had a feeling it's going to be really hard to build through the draft. I'm glad I traded my picks for proven talent, even if it was just a one-year rental. Free agency this year was way more interesting. Deshaun Foster was available and I made him a rich offer. He'll be our new running back. I also sent the house to Mike Minter, who replaced Woodson who retired the previous year. I had to pay him nearly double the price of the third highest paid strong safety because players do not want to come to Dallas anymore. Let's hope all these moves helped. The third preseason was Tony Romo's best so far. We even got him to be Improvement Jones over here. But I wanted to give him the best chance to succeed. I traded Keyshawn Johnson and a first round pick for Reggie Wayne. Then I traded a second, third, and fourth for David. Please come to Boston. There's no excuse that Romo can't perform better this season with these weapons. And for the first time in this series, we didn't start undefeated, but we did start the year 1-1 one one for the third straight year, beating the Rams in week 2. Then we'd be back to being the same old Cowboys losing 5 straight before beating the Jaguars in one of our best wins since Romo took over. Also for the first time in this series, we had a winning streak beating the Saints the following week. Then we'd lose three more games before getting revenge on Henson and the Bears in week 14. We've now tied our highest win total with three games left. Can we win more than four this year? No. We lost out going 4-12 once again. I do think Tony Romo had his best season, but even his best season was terrible. He did improve his rating to be the best since year one. That 
that's a good sign, I think. I also think splitting the carries isn't helping the ground game succeed and puts more pressure on Romo to throw more than he should. What's the point of having weapons if you can't get him the ball? Wanting to spotlight Coakley's insane season, dude balled out and once again the offense was terrible, passing is terrible, and the running game was slightly better. Defense was nowhere as good as the first two seasons. Looking at the head coach stats, 10 wins in 3 seasons, I think it's time to move on. That's exactly what I did, I fired him and hired Tim Brown as the head coach. Did I sign him just cause he's a former player and I wanted to show that off? Yes, but I also wanted to show that his philosophy is untouched. So I changed it to fit what I think would have gotten him the job, which was to focus on the run game that would allow the team to not put the ball in Romo's hands as much, as well as the defense being less aggressive. On to the offseason, lots of players don't want to be here anymore. Saturday, Wayne, Witten, Page, Singleton, all of them had low morale and didn't want to re-sign. So I franchised Saturday and if we're focusing on running more, we're going to need a strong line. I also replaced Singleton with Rod Davis from the free agency period. I also noticed that some players weren't signed after free agency, which gave me an idea. Flozell Adams wanted to be traded, so I sent him to New England for Daniel Graham. This will be Witten's replacement. Then I signed Brad Hopkins in free agency. Screw it, I signed Aaron Glenn too. This isn't a realistic rebuild anyways. Then I traded away a third and fourth for Nalen. Then I moved him to right guard. The final trade was Larry Allen, who also wanted to be traded, was sent with a second round pick to Atlanta for Todd McClure and a third round pick. The new offensive line may not be better, but it's still pretty good. I still have a first round pick to make a trade for a right tackle if I want to try. I traded my first for a right tackle, Tauscher. I might even make the argument that our offensive line is better than it's ever been before. Plus, Romo finally outperformed Krenzel in the preseason. I mean, it wasn't pretty. But for the first time, he won the job. And for the third time in four years, we're undefeated with Tony Romo. That's what I want to see. The ground is pounding. But then we'd go on to lose three in a row. Then we would upset Washington to get our second win of the season thanks to the ground game again. We'd lose the following week but get another win. The thing I see that's consistent is how dominant the ground game is when we win. Heck, we had our second ever win streak beating the Lions and Deshaun Foster tore it up giving us our first season going 4-4 four and four at the midway point. Though the Patriots would set us back to reality, then Romo decided now, against the Eagles, would be the best time to have his best performance of the season. Then we would hit reality again with Washington dominating us, then we'd get back to 500 with a win against Minnesota. This is the best season so far and there's a real chance we can make the playoffs of of course, we would lose to the 2 and 10 Bears, with Henson still their quarterback. Of course. We would get back to 500 with a win against the Cardinals, but it really didn't matter as we would lose the final two games. It was a successful season, but with all the talent on the team, it's insane that Romo alone is weighing the team down this much. I even tried to take the ball out of his hands more, and he still threw more interceptions than he should have. Unless I completely take the ball out of his hands, we're not going to be a playoff team with them. Deshaun Foster had an unbelievable season and that's what happens when you have a dominant offensive line. Even the backups got some good yards. The receivers were terrible, but I blame Romo more than anything else. I wanted to highlight our free agent signing, Rod Davis. Led the team in sacks. Good signing. It's clear we're trying to pass less. At this point, do we completely ignore the passing game and adopt an all-running attack? Defensively speaking, I think we're better than I expected, but the offense is really the main problem. I wanted to test out how well players are as coordinators. We signed Jerome Bettis as our offensive coordinator, while we signed Aeneas Williams as the defensive coordinator. I mean, it worked out with Tim Brown. 
Here's why I was disappointed with this season. We had a lot of players to resign. Mark Tauscher was brought back along with Billy Cundiff. Who wasn't brought back? Jeff Saturday, Marcellus Wiley, Dexter Coakley, Terry Glenn, Leroy Glover, and Roy Williams. All of them hated it here. But I franchise with Williams, so he has to come back. I did get a good draft pick in the third round. I don't really talk about the draft since I never have any picks, but I think that this was a good pick. Moving on to free agency, nobody wanted to sign with me. Trust me, I tried. They wanted more than the house, they wanted the world, and I just didn't have enough money. I didn't pick up anyone. There were also a lot of players who didn't want to be here anymore. Deshaun Foster decided he hates it here after his amazing season. I traded him to Pittsburgh for a first and a replacement player. Then David wants out of Boston. I traded him to the Buccaneers for a first and a replacement player. Greg Ellis also wanted out. I traded him to the Vikings for a strong safety and a first. Dak Gwynn wanted to be traded. I sent him to Washington for a replacement player and a first. I traded Gary Baxter for a replacement player and a second round pick. I traded Terrence Newman for a replacement player and a second rounder. Counting the offseason and these trades, lots of players don't want to be a cowboy anymore and we're still not done. Mike Minter was traded for a second round pick and a free safety which means I was able to trade Roy Williams for a defensive tackle and a first round pick. We now have six first round picks and four second round picks. Do I build through the draft? We know the development is terrible in this game, or do we continue to trade these picks for proven players? We're going to have a lot of cap penalty next year. Do we just use this season and next season to clear space and build with younger players? I'm really unsure what to do. Romo is destroying this franchise. Well, if we are going to have a throwaway season, I might as well change up the scheme. I tried to make this a realistic challenge, but Romo, is so bad that we had to throw that out the window. Instead, this season we're going to keep the ball out of his hands completely, and would you look at that, it worked. We're undefeated with Tony Romo as the quarterback to start the year. And it didn't last long, Seattle put us in our place real quick. But then the Rams gave us hope once again. This is the first time ever in this series we've ever had a winning record after week one. This has never happened. Are we Good. No. No, we're not good. We lost the next nine games before beating the Vikings in a 6-3 game. Yeah, our offense is terrible. That's what happens when you play like it's the 1920s. We wouldn't win another game finishing the season 3-13 even though we hardly threw it. Romo was even worse than he's ever been before. I really don't know what to do. The running game was dominant thanks to black men but couldn't score much. They were second in the NFL on rushing but this isn't sustainable for wins. While the defense did far better considering what the offense was putting out there, this is going to be a long season. Lots of players retired this year. I think the time for a hard reboot begins this year. I say that because once again there's a lot of disgruntled players not wanting to resign. Joe Burns, Michael Clayton, Dan Campbell, Willie Blade, Pete Hunter, Willie Offord, and Mac McBriar. We needed our players to be gruntled and it looks like we're doing a reboot year. The good thing is we had 10 draft picks in the first two rounds. Yeah, we, we didn't hit on all of them, but they were all mostly in the 70s. James Davis, our first pick selected, was 80 overall while the only player below 70 was Rick Farmer who graded out as a top 10 talent. He wasn't even top 10 in our own draft. In free agency, we signed a few players to compete for backup roles, but that's about it. This season, we're going for players who want to be here and can hopefully develop. Before we head on to the sixth season, I traded off the players who didn't want to be here and I sent Daniel Graham to the Vikings for David Martin and a second round pick. I traded away Todd McClure to the Cardinals for Ryan Clark and a second round pick. I traded Mark Tauscher and a seventh round pick to the Bengals for a replacement player and a first and second 
second round pick. I also traded Robert Butler in a third to the Eagles for a starting corner, a depth free safety, and a first. The final trade, I just wanted to move on from Grode and sent him with a fifth and sixth to the Vikings for a third. Yeah, um, something I did notice. Blackman was disgruntled, but was absolutely furious after the trade. Yeah, I, I, I think spending the next few years building through the draft should fix this, but will Romo retire before that even happens? This year, I decided to jump the shark. We went super aggressive last season. We're going super conservative this year. Let's see if that changes anything. I knew this team was going to be bad, but I didn't think they were going to be this bad. I think they're going to have to create a new word to define something worse than bad. It'll probably just be the Dallas Cowboys star logo. That movie that came out last week, was a Dallas Cowboy movie. Don't worry about your ex, they're a Dallas Cowboy person. This overcooked steak is Dallas Cowboys. It wouldn't be until week 13 that they would squeak a win out against the Chicago Bears. They would lose the last four games, finishing with a 1-15 record. We're Dallas Cowboys, y'all. I don't know how, but Tony Romo keeps getting worse. And even in a super conservative offense, he threw more interceptions this year. I, I don't know how that's possible. The running game was more split as Blackman had an injury that sidelined him for a while, but we still managed to be third in team rushing on the season, though the defense had its worst season yet. That's not to say we didn't have standouts like Rod Davis with this third straight 10 sack season. So Tim Brown, Jerome Bettis, and Aeneas Williams have all decided to leave this train wreck. That's fine. I ended up signing Brett Favre as the head coach, Barrow as the defensive coordinator, and Rich Gannon as the offensive coordinator. I think you know what I'm thinking of. We're going to head towards the bushes by being super aggressive and pass heavy with this Favre-led offense. We have two former quarterbacks coaching this team. Who needs to run when pass do trick? I also don't know how much longer Roma will be on the team since he's now 30 and, well, terrible. And this guy retired at 32. Might as well let him go out with a bang. Now, morale is still rough for some of our players. Rod Davis isn't going to come back to the team. Same with Billy Cundiff. They hate us. I was able to re-sign Chris Kuyper, even with his terrible morale. That's a good sign, right? We had the first pick in the draft and we chose this stud right here. Rich Kirkland was the best player I think I've ever drafted. Everyone else was mediocre. And that's fine, we're just trying to create a new environment where players want to come and play. And I think it's working because Rashawn Woods had a terrible morale and he's never been a cowboy. That works for me, brother. I signed him to the team. The hope is that he can become the number one target for Romo in this new pass-happy offense. Let the season begin and we were bad again this pass heavy offense is as terrible as the run heavy conservative offense the team wouldn't win a game until week eight against the giants but wouldn't win another game for the rest of the year we really dallas cowboyed that season up i really just wanted to see how a pass heavy aggressive offense would look but with romo as the quarterback it was bad. It wasn't even that many more yards than one of his normal seasons. I think you need to have a really good quarterback or receivers to make it work. I missed out on that Wayne Boston Glenn season. Rashawn Woods did get us our first 1000 yard receiver in this video. That's neat. Also, Ryan Clark is good? What the heck? The team was bad all over on offense and defense, and I think the turnovers that Romo made forced the defense out more than they should have, causing them to be worse. I think I'm returning back to having a realistic, air quotes, game plan. Keep the ball out of Romo's hand, but still be aggressive when we have to be. Once again, the youngest player to retire was 32. Romo's time could be coming up next year, we'll see. We are still trying to get rid of all the low morale players. Blackman and Wilson will be gone at the running back position. Brady James is not returning to the team. Surprisingly, Ryan Clark didn't hate it here. He's coming back. Overall, we don't have many good players, and here's hoping the draft and free agents so you can change that. The draft was only good for the first two rounds with the receiver and running back, but after that it was, it was terrible. 
While in free agency, I tried signing so many players, I tried overpaying for a lot of them. Nobody, and I mean nobody, wanted to come to Dallas. Trying to win with Romo is impossible. What have I done? Why did I do this challenge? Where did it all go wrong? Who am I? Huh. Now that I've composed myself, on to season 8 with this very lackluster roster. I'm not kidding, look at the roster. There's not many 80 overall players, let alone 90. This could be another 1 in 15 season, and I'm surprised we didn't go 0 in 16 the past two years messing around with the scheme, but I think this might be one of the worst rosters we've had. I think the actual worst roster wasn't that much worse than this. But after the preseason, Tony Romo had a glow up. I think we found our offensive scheme. Let's start the year against the Giants and surprisingly, well, not really, we're undefeated with Tony Romo as a starter. Then we had a close game against the Eagles. Wait a minute, is this scheme actually good? Did I find the magic spot? Okay, maybe not. At least we don't have to worry about going 0-16 this year. You know, our offense may be bad, but the Cardinals may be worse, like way worse. They threw five interceptions. We're at 500 on the year. We're rolling now. Guys, we're above 500. I don't remember if we were ever above 500 this far into the season. Can we have an ultimate underdog run for the playoff spot? No, we, we lost the next three games. Well, we're playing against the one win Jets team. We can't lose that one, right? Well, we, we didn't lose. We did lose the next two games and all playoff hopes are now vanishing. But we beat the Rams. Hold on now, Romo's looking good in this offense. If we can pull off a win streak to finish the year, there's a chance. There was no chance. We finished 4-11-1, which is our best season since year 4. I still call it a successful season since we found the sweet spot for the offense. Tony Romo had his best season under this new scheme and he looked very serviceable. I think if we can carry it over to the next season, this team could be a non-losing team. The rookie Tyrone Walls went balls and rushed close to 1,500 yards on the season. Rashawn Woods was still very productive despite the lack of reps. I really think this offense found the sweet spot now. The only thing that needs to be fixed, and I'm preparing for it by focusing more on the run, since the secondary was picking off passes left and right. And none of that matters because Romo retired at the age of 32, had his best season, and decided, this is the best I can do. I'm out. In eight seasons, we went 27, 100, and 1. Romo didn't start all of them, but he had the majority. What do you think? Should I try again with the newfound knowledge, or is rebuilding in these games a little too difficult? Let me know. I'll see you in the next one.